Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. I got some fantastic news for you. So, no one ever told me that V2 stopped working. That's Affinity V2. Uh, nobody mentioned it, and because of this, I had to find a fix. And, well, you know me, I find fixes. I make things work. Because that's what I'm good at, making things work. And in doing so, I made things work. Now, it's a bit complicated the way that I made things work. I had to update the metadata, uh, sorry, the win metadata folder in System32 to include an extra folder. Then I had to include a win types DDL uh, right next to the .exe and include a win override, or sorry, a wine override. And it works, like, fully, which is nice, unless you're on AMD, and then, well, you're going to be using DXVK probably. But the point is, it, it works. It does a thing. Now, uh, I'm going to get rid of all this because I want to start again. Because as always, when there's a major update, I need to fully inform you about what's going on and everything else. And I just realized that we cannot live there, so we shall live here. Okay. So, if I hit one click full setup, hit yes, you'll notice that there's only... 9.14 and 10.10. 10.10 was built using GitHub actions, and it took me a very long time to get this to run. And the reason being is, well, the first way I did it was trying to compile wine normally within Git actions or GitHub actions, and that just did not work. I got to the point where it did spit out a version of wine. But unfortunately, it was missing some very, very important stuff. Why does it cancel? Why can't you just sit and wait? I need to fix that. There must be a timer thing. And that was problematic. So instead, I built a .sh, which ends up just patching wine, configuring wine, making sure that all the dependencies are present. But if they're not, the verification does not fail. And then it just builds wine according to how many threads uh, that GitHub Actions have. And that ended up working almost perfectly, except for the fact that there was some issues in the beginning. But it did end up working. And I want to show you this real quick, because this sort of matters. Because this is really, really, really cool. Why is there another issue open? People are bored. They really are. So, this is the new build wine .10 .10 sh Okay, this is built specifically for GitHub Actions. And you can see we had some failures and I, I like making my, uh, you know, my commits funny sounding. <laughs> yeah, so it went through the whole process of setting up, doing all this stuff, and then finally spitting out an artifact. And thankfully, this artifact ended up working right into the box. Now, it should work on all CPUs which is the whole point of this. Having a universal Wine 10.10 .10 means that it's just as compatible as, let's say, Wine 9.14 was. But the difference is, there's a lot more that actually goes into this Wine, and I shouldn't have exited that because I kind of want to show you. And I really need to pin that there. I really do. So this Wine ended up getting a lot of pull requests. And... Um, well, there's five in total. First, there's more patches here, and then here, and then do that, and then there's this, and then there's that. Uh, <clears throat> stuff? Yeah? A lot of files were changed. Ignore the 10.11. It doesn't work very well. But it's just modifications through patches. And the reason why 10.10.11 doesn't work very well is because when you go to export a file, it will crash Explorer, and you don't want that. And then... There's all of these here, right? These two patches here, and modifications to build.wine. And then, you know, unfortunately, this just didn't work out the way that I, I wished it to, because I would love to use 10.11 wine. But yeah, Explorer just crashes, and that's a thing. And then, uh, added a virtual patch to wine to do a whole bunch of stuff, which I believe it ended up fixing the subtools in Affinity and other stuff so that's really really good uh i like that 
and add a fix running 32-bit processes when using NTS Sync. So this version of Wine does use NTS Sync, and uh, that's that's the cool part. Let me put me over here because yeah. So all in all, a lot of work has gone into this. So let's one-click install this. I'm going to use OpenCL. I'm going to select 10.10. .10. Then I will fix it so it doesn't automatically cancel itself after a few seconds. So it's automatically also going to download 10, uh, 9.14 to cache it in case you want to switch your wine version. I go with that. Uh, everything should do what it needs to do. Now, the other changes that I made are as follows. Um, it uses wine TKG for wine tricks. So that means that it should never fail on .NET 48 or 35. And it has never failed on me even once unless I'm on Pico OS. I don't know what's wrong with Pico OS, but again, that's a whole other issue that I need to figure out time to fix. Now, Mint users, Manjaro users, Garuda users, Zorin users, Ubuntu users, you need to remember you are on your own. In other words, you have no support due to the fact that you have an outdated version of glibc. Well, Ubuntu, Mint, and Zorin do. So there's no support there. And Manjaro is just not a good distro to run because it has its own issues. And Garuda, I don't know anything about Garuda anymore. I'm sure it's changed a lot in either good or bad ways. But I just don't want to bother supporting it in case something ends up going really wrong. And... uh I don't need to get blamed for that. This does work on Fedora 43. That's what we're on now. I've tried Nabora 43. Uh, Base Arch works. Cache OS works. Endeavor OS works. Zero Linux works. And yeah. Now, after this, I need to rebuild the app image. It's a universal app image. It will work on all CPUs, so on and so forth. OpenCL is no longer necessary. Uh, because getting OpenCL to work with AMD GPUs is a hassle. I will try to figure that out eventually. But for now, DXVK does the exact same thing as OpenCL. So it's not really necessary. So take that into comfort knowing that uh, you're good to go on that front. Okay? I will see you when this is done and we'll do some testing. Yes, testing. Okay, and we're going to hit yes. The setup is complete, and I really need to make it so it maxes this out, but yeah, if you ever feel like it's weird, just like stretch it. I'm still working on the UI a little bit, but I've made it a lot more professional than it was before, and that's pretty much a given, uh, considering how clean it is. And it should just run the installer. Come on, you can do it. I wish I could honestly speed this thing up, but it's kind of difficult without breaking certain things. Python is not really that uh, fast, I guess, if you will. Make sure there's no errors. Correct, there's not. It's redoing the win metadata, setting up the DDL overrides. And it's downloading the WinTypes DDL. Good. Let's download it. It set it in its path. That's where it's supposed to be. And that should be it. And we need to talk about... Um, what do you want to call it here? Uh, WebView 2. For some reason it stopped installing and I don't know why. I just figured I'd let you know that. Okay. Now I am going to go and install photo for v2 okay as you can see it's right there and this should also work properly hopefully and hit okay it's gonna do unpacking of temporary files i use a modified version of affinity linux by the way our uh, affinity photo <clears throat> It just makes life a little easier for me. Come on, you. And anyway, it doesn't matter now. You know? There we go. 
once this is finished, it should do the whole metadata thing. It is. It's going to download it. It's going to do the DDL overrides for direct 3D or whatever, blah, blah, blah. And it should do the wind types as well. Oh, it doesn't do the wind types. Oh, that's fine. There's a button for that. There we go. Just got to click this button right here. And it will automatically set up the overrides anyway. So I got to fix it so uh, it does the wind type. You know, whatchamacallit. Alright, so exiting this, we are able to go to Infinity 2. And it will boot up. It will do its whole loading thing. Yes, excellent. Hit close. We're on the newest version. And if we go into edit settings, you'll notice that we do have our OpenCL performance here, which is great. And I'll close that. We're able to go and open up Affinity. Signing in is still not possible. Okay, and because the WebView 2 is not working or installing, uh, neither is this thing right here, I believe. Okay, but there you go. Now, what you might notice is that there is more performance than there was before. And I don't know why. I, uh, I honestly cannot tell you. But we're going to do our normal test right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to type NVTOP over here. And I'm going to go. I'm at a second screen. Okay. Because I want to show you everything that's going on while we're doing it. So we're going to capture NVTOP right there. Now, if you're new to this, if you don't know what NVTOP is, you'll notice these green little bars here. Okay. They're highlighted. See it? These indicate when something is being computed. And you can also see that compute and graphic are currently working on affinity according to this line. Now, liquify is the ultimate test for compute. That flickering is normal. Just ignore it. But look at that. It is accelerating on the GPU. Everything is working great. So there you go. Now, if we close this down, another thing I managed to fix because of another user is... One second, I gotta go find out where the thing is. Is DXVK for you uh, AMD users. Oh, that's the wrong button. It's this one. Switch to DXVK. We're gonna hit yes. Alright, it's gonna do its thing. Thing is done. Now I'm going to put that right there. And I'm going to open up this. And it's going to still open, which is the good part. Because before, if you set DXVK, it would not open. And we're going to go liquify. Okay. And we still have compute on the affinity side. As you can see, but here's the thing, we're not using OpenCL, but we are. What madness is this? What has been done? Wait, what did it do? I don't think it worked right. I don't think it worked right at all. Uh, let me check the wine configuration. It worked right? So now I have OpenCL support. What the frack? I'm, I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining. This is actually so cool. <laughs> yeah, so this is even smoother than it was before, which is really cool. So you're able to do whatever you need to do. All right. That's what matters. Look. Everything's looking good. Now, I don't know if this is going to work for AMD GPUs. Please understand this. I do not have one. And I don't plan on asking for donations to get one either. Uh, if, a, if an AMD user wants to step up, learn, and help me fix these issues, I will be very appreciative towards this. Uh, and it would be very cool to see. Okay? There we go. That's the update for today. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did... You know what to do. Subscribe. You know, that's what helps the most. Uh, watch future videos. When you subscribe, hit the bell to be notified of everything. 
which is super helpful. And all in all, uh, commenting, hitting the like button, subscribing also helps. Look at that. Look at that acceleration. That's so nice. Look at that. You know, interacting with the channel in general ends up doing a lot more than you think it does with the AI algorithm overlords always watching. Bye, everybody. I hope you enjoy this Affinity update. And if you want to donate, you can do so uh, in the description below and pinned in the first comment. It helps me immensely because I spend a lot of time working on this and getting all this to work. So, bye, everybody.